1931, a scientific periodical released a paper with a strange title on formerly undecidable propositions of Principia Mathematica and related systems. It was written by a young mathematician by the name of Kurt Gödel. This paper was to become one of the most important ideas in mathematical logic since Aristotle. Every theorem in geometry can be proved or disproved using simple ideas. This is known as the axiomatic method for geometry. And mathematicians wanted an axiomatic base for which every single number theoretical statement could be devised. And so the search began. Until Gödel's paper proved that is impossible, and he did this using the symbol notation found in the Principia Mathematica. In the 1800s, many important mathematicians started finding inconsistencies and paradoxes on the foundation of mathematics, most famously, the Russell Paradox. Wait, what? Mathematics is supposed to be a clear, coherent, logical discipline. And now we're finding out that something is true while being false, and false while being true? See, that was a problem. And that was the problem of consistency. So Bertrand Russell, one of the most important philosophers, mathematicians, and pacifists, thought to himself, Hey, I'm one of the finest philosophers, mathematicians, and pacifists of my generation. Maybe I should take a crack at this. So with the British mathematician Andrew Whitehead, he wrote the absolutely humongous book called Principia Mathematica. How huge was this book? Well, it took 300 pages to prove that 1 plus 1 equals 2. Russell rigorously explained what 1 is, what 2 is, what addition is, and what equality is. The Principia Mathematica is important to Gödel's paper because the paper's actual title, if you remember, is On Formally Undecidable Propositions of Principia Mathematica and Related Systems. So the whole paper that Gödel wrote uses the ideas that Bertrand Russell had of Principia Mathematica to prove that the system itself is actually broken. Mathematicians proposed a solution to this that would ensure that these paradoxes never happened. If we could solve two problems, then we would have the perfect system in which all true mathematical statements can be proved. It turned on the question whether a given set of axioms serving as the foundation for number theory is internally consistent so that no mutually contradictory theorems can be deduced. So for example, one day a mathematician figures out that A is true. Think of A as a mathematical statement. But then a week later, another mathematician finds out that A is not true as in A is false, but both can be correct, A either has to be true or not true, like it either has to be raining or not raining. So that was the test for mathematicians. How can they make sure that a system is consistent? To establish a set of assumptions from which all true statements can be deduced. Mathematicians were looking for a proof that could prove that all true mathematical statements could be derived from a system. Until the 1930s, it was taken as a matter of course that a complete set of axioms for any given branch of mathematics can be assembled, which is both complete and consistent. The fact that this can never be done is one of Gödel's crowning achievements.
What Godel did was construct a statement G of PM that represents the mathematical statement. The formula G is not demonstrable using the rules of PM. This formula says of itself that it is not demonstrable. But Godel in his paper also proved that G is demonstrable and not G is also demonstrable. If G and not G are demonstrable, then PM is obviously inconsistent. Turning this around, if PM is consistent, then G is formally undecidable. Remember the title on formally undecidable propositions? Well, G actually is the formally undecidable proposition. But here's a twist. Obviously, either G or not G has to be true, right? Like either 2 plus 2 equals 75 or 2 plus 2 does not equal 75. There can be times where 2 plus 2 sometimes equals 75. It's either it does or it doesn't. And so even though G is formally undecidable, it nevertheless is a true statement. And here's the Big Bang. Since G is both true and formally undecidable within PM, PM must be incomplete. In other words, we cannot deduce all arithmetical truths from the axioms of PM. To add to the fact that it is incomplete, Godel proved that it is essentially incomplete. Basically that PM will always have to be incomplete no matter what. Because if we added another axiom to the already existing axioms, and then G becomes true, there will be another statement G0, which can be devised to say that the formula G0 is not demonstrable using PM. And then we'll add G0 as an axiom, and then we'll get G0, and then we can devise another statement, add that to the axioms, G0, then G0, and then suddenly we have G0 to the thousand. So basically, no matter what, there will always be true statements, completely true statements, that cannot be solved. Tired? Well, there's actually more. The second incompleteness theorem is just an extension of the first. Godel then constructed a formula A, which represents the mathematical statement, PM is consistent, and he showed that if A then G is a demonstrable formula in PM. Simply, if PM is consistent, then the formula G is not demonstrable using the rules of PM. Finally, he showed that since G is not demonstrable, then A is not demonstrable. So the final conclusion is that the consistency of PM cannot be established by any chain of logical reasoning inside PM. So basically, there can be no proof of consistency that is absolute. I just want you to think about the deeper philosophical notions of a proof like the incompleteness theorems. There will always be true statements that no one can prove. There will never be a system that can prove itself as consistent. There will never ever be a time when human intellect can be fully formalized. Godel's conclusions should not be a reason to despair or be confused. As the writers of the book Godel's proof concluded with, it is an occasion not for dejection, but for a renewed appreciation of the powers of creative reasoning.